dogs, cats, and Komodo dragons? Oh my! Welcome to Jen's Writing World. If you have a story to tell, you are in the right place. Let's do it 10 minutes at a time. Well, if you've been watching my videos at all, you know I have pets, three cats, and they are very active and they kind of run all over the whole house. But you know what? They make life really exciting. If you saw the thumbnail to this video, you'll notice they tend to do their own thing. And if you say, hey, let's take a picture, they're not cooperative. But I love them. And I think that they make me a better person because I have someone to care for and something to love. And I have to get up in the morning whether I feel it or not because they're like, excuse me, the food bowl is empty. All of these are things that you probably want to have in your stories too. So why not add pets to your stories? Now I have to say, I love reading books that have animals in them. Some of my favorite books, and I'm going to mention a little weird one, but that's okay. Jane Castle, who is a pseudonym for Jane Ann Krentz. Um, she uses the Jane Castle name when she writes her futuristic sci-fi fantasy books. Um, has a whole series um, of these humans that went to another planet and the gate closed behind them and so generations have lived in this other planet. And it's really cool and really well done. But we're talking about pets. Every main character, either the guy or the girl, these are romances, has what is called a dust bunny. And dust bunnies are indigenous animals to the planet. And most of the time, they just look like harmless balls of fur, which is why they're called dust bunnies. But it is said that when you see all of their eyes, because they have multiple sets, it's too late because they're actually really fierce hunters. They also have a fondness for pretzels. But my point is this, what makes the characters really likable is their relationship with their dust bunnies. And the dust bunnies tend to steal the show, which is the hazard of handing animals your books. But these are just romances. In theory, they are just cookie cutter. But the dust bunnies bring it up a level to where you really begin to relate and like the characters. In my own books, I have animals, well, in everything I write. Okay. Not my current book, but the kids are at camp. And I am going to have a lot of animals in the book. They're just going to be of the Cambrian age and they're going to swim around a lot and they're not pets, but they are animals. Needless to say though, whenever I write a mystery, there is always a dog in it. Um, my current mystery I'm working on, uh, she runs with a very large dog um, and other people have cats. And the dogs are, in this case, not important to the plot although the dog does find a dead body um, in the story, so I guess that's important to the plot. But more importantly, they take what is just a character and they make a character who loves her dog and takes good care of her dog, and the readers are automatically like, oh, we like this person. She's a good person. She's good to her dog. She treats animals well. We like her. And so it's a really easy way, without putting any more words on the page, no telling here. This is all showing how people treat animal relates to how the reader sees them. Now, interestingly enough, it can work both ways. Let's say you have a villain and you want to make the villain, if not likable, at least you want to make them human. And it's really easy to make, you know, villains two dimensionals. They're all bad all the time. No redeeming qualities. Give your villain a pet. Give your antagonist a pet, a pet that they treat well. Um, one of the most famous ones I can think of is Dr. No from the James Bond movies and the white cat that he has in his lap. And he treats that cat very well. It's very obvious. He's affectionate with the cat. He pets the cat. Is he an evil mastermind? Yes, he is. But we know he has one human element. He likes his cat. And that one human element, even if we don't recognize it, the reader will think, oh, well, they're not all bad. And if they're not all bad, maybe I have to question why they're doing what they're doing. Maybe there is some underlying purpose that I didn't realize when I thought, oh, that's just the bad guy. Suddenly it's like, wait, the bad guy is human. I'm human. And now I can relate a little bit more. So why not try adding some pets to your story and see how that changes your characters for better or for worse. It's time to go write. All right, we are in our office writing for today. 
I don't know if I'm going to introduce any animals or not. I'm not sure I'm that far into the story. Anyway, let's get started with our writing. Got the timer right here, and 10 minutes is on it, and we will start right now. Three, two, one, write.
Okay, well, I just got him started. Long way to go. I hope your writing went well today, too. All right, well, that was a really fun 10 minutes of writing. Um, my cats helped a lot, even if you didn't see them. They were in the room, um, they've been eating their food, they've been making life interesting, kind of like pets in books do. Leave a comment if you have pets in your stories, if you have literary pets that you love, do hit the like button if you had a good time today. And as always, I hope you're sharing my channel with your writing friends. If you have Facebook groups and you're allowed to make comments like, hey, I know this YouTube channel, um, I wish that you would. Don't get in trouble though. Today's quote is by Jennifer Chiaverini. My favorite books of hers are her quilting series. My quilting group used to devour her books. And this is what she said. Allow your characters to grow and change naturally. If characters don't change, that's not consistency. That's stagnation. You know the easiest way to get a character to grow? Give them a pet. I promise they will grow in one way or another. So long from Jen's writing world, and until tomorrow, write, write, write.